It's over a year before remains of all the crash victims are identified, most by using DNA analysis. The families of the victims band together to build a memorial to their loved ones on Long Island. The monument in Smith Point is a labor of love. They got a, a piece of black marble that they made the centerpiece of it, inscribing all the names on the front. It's a place for Jim Hurd to remember his son, Jamie. This is, this is the closest place I can be to where he's, he's buried because really most of him's out there in the ocean. Or that's where he, he went. Um. When the fog begins to roll in, or at the very early morning when the, when the mist is gently there, you can feel the presence of souls. The disaster is a wake-up call to the aviation industry. The Federal Aviation Administration issues more than 70 airworthiness directives to eliminate any possible source of accidental ignition and improve insulation of wiring to fuel tanks. They affect 7,500 aircraft in the U.S. transport fleet. Boeing implements the FAA orders and also introduces fuel tank inerting, a system that tops up fuel tanks with nitrogen, preventing jet fuel from catching fire. The first commercial jumbo jet, fitted with an inerting system, rolled out in the summer of 2005. And starting from 2007, all new Boeing 7 Series planes will feature the new technology. America. New York City. John F. Kennedy Airport. July 17, 1996. Security is tight at New York's busiest airport. Tens of thousands of people will pass through JFK today on some 1,000 flights. They are all potential targets for terrorist attack. In nearby Manhattan, terrorist Ramzi Youssef is in the U.S. federal court. He's on trial for trying to blow up the World Trade Center with a 600-kilogram truck bomb. But he's also accused of masterminding a plot to kill hundreds of innocent people with bombs planted on 12 U.S. airplanes. The FBI knows that many members of Youssef's terrorist cell remain at large and could still target planes for attack. We were in a very high state of alert in the United States. Uh, we'd had numerous, numerous threats, hundreds of threats. Heading to JFK today are two young college students from Macon, Georgia. Becky Olson is 20 years old. She's been best friends with 19-year-old Michelle Becker since high school. They're excited. Today they'll fly to Paris for a friend's wedding, followed by a backpacking holiday around Europe. The girl's parents have given the trip their blessing. They were very excited to be going. They just knew it was going to be a wonderful new adventure. They thought that this was just going to be the best thing since chocolate cake. Up on flight, because I think we can get some money. What do you think? It's a tough dilemma. The girls don't want to risk losing their free upgrade, but as students, they could use the money. 6 p.m. 212 passengers board flight 800 in good time for a 7 p.m. takeoff. Among them is Jamie Hurd. He's only eight hours away from seeing his girlfriend, Hope. In charge of the crew this evening is Captain Steven Snyder. With 4,700 hours of flying time on 747s, he's one of TWA's most experienced pilots. Flying alongside Snyder is Captain Ralph Kevorkian, another TWA veteran. 7 p.m. Captain Snyder and the flight crew are ready to go. But there's a problem. One of the passengers is not on board, but her bags are already in the hold. In 1988, 
Pan Am 103 exploded in mid-air over the town of Lockerbie in Scotland, killing 270 people. Terrorists checked a bag containing a bomb into the hold, but didn't board the plane. Since then, planes cannot take off with a bag in the hold if the passenger who checked it is not on board. The plane is delayed while ground staff hunt for the missing passenger. Outside, it's 28 degrees Celsius, and on the asphalt of the apron, the jumbo is getting hot. As the minutes tick by, air conditioning... And I thought, gee, they must have two to three hundred people on board. I thought it was a bomb. Twelve minutes out of JFK on a routine trip to Paris. TWA Flight 800 explodes in a huge fireball. At air traffic control, Flight 800 suddenly disappears off radar screens. East Winds pilot David McLean reports in to air traffic control. We just saw an explosion out here, about 16,000 feet. It just went down into the water. Air traffic control tries to raise Flight 800 on the radio. TWA 800, if you hear center, I dent. There's no response. TWA 800, if you hear center, I dent. The terrible truth starts to dawn. TWA 800, center. Thousands of meters below, a helicopter from the Air National Guard flying on a training mission is caught beneath the blast. I looked over my right shoulder. This will be an extra special trip. Michelle's dad, Walter Becker, has saved enough air miles to upgrade the girls to first class. Back then, first class was first class, and uh, I felt that they would really enjoy that, both going and, and returning back home. 4.31 p.m. The Boeing 747 that will become TWA Flight 800 to Paris arrives at JFK. It's 25 years old and has more than 16,000 flights under its belt. Tanker trucks move in to fuel up the plane. The ground crew pumps 114,000 liters of jet A fuel into the six wing tanks. It's more than enough to fly to Paris. The biggest tank, the center wing tank, can stay as it is, almost empty. Just outside Baltimore, Maryland, 29-year-old Jamie Hurd finishes up last-minute chores at the family garage. Yeah, okay, you pick it up Tuesday. How's that? All right, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Since joining two years ago, Jamie has computerized the office for his dad, Jim. You know, he kind of brought us into the, the present age, from back from the dark ages. Jamie is flying to Paris to hook up with his girlfriend, Hope, who's in France on an exchange visit. Yourself. It's his first flight to Europe. Inside JFK's Terminal 5, Michelle Becker calls home to ask her mother for advice. Hi, Mom. TWA is offering cash incentives for passengers to take a later flight. Do you think we should take... Functioning units under the fuselage keep the passengers cool. Fifty minutes go by, and there is still no sign of the mystery passenger. At 7.59 p.m., gate personnel contact the crew. TWA Flight 800, sorry about that delay. We have confirmation that the passenger is on board. They were on board the whole time. 8.19. At last, Captain Kevorkin throttles up the 747. Flight 800 lifts off an hour and 20 minutes late. 
TWA 800's flight path will take it through some of the most congested airspace in the USA. It will also skirt the boundary of a US military zone to the south. Air traffic control keeps flights well clear of any restricted airspace during weapons testing. 8.31, Flight 800 climbs into the evening sky. Eastwind Airlines pilot David McLean is flying a 737 into Trenton, New Jersey. He sees the jumbo jet ahead of him. It was a nice night, good visibility. There's a lot of traffic going out there, so you always got to keep your eyes out. Air traffic control clears Flight 800 to climb to its next level. TWA 800, heavy turn left heading 050, vector climbing around traffic. Climb the 15,000. Crew and passengers settle in for the flight. Then, suddenly, 